Hello everyone, my name's Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So in this video I'm going to carry on looking at the model ranges for some of the factions in Age of Sigma. Yesterday I looked at the Ossiarch Bone Reapers. I think the reception of that video was really good, so thank you very much for the support. A few of you mentioned you would love to see me talk about the Ideneth Deepkin, so yeah, that sounded like a pretty logical place to go next. We've done a Death Faction, let's take a look at an Order Faction. Now the Ideneth Deepkin, they don't really need much of an introduction, but they are the craziest faction probably so far in all of Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar is trying to be high fantasy, it's moving away from this Tolkien classic fantasy inspired thing that you know the old world was and it's really coming into its own as something totally different and I would say that the Ideneth Deepkin embody that change more than any other faction. I don't think there is anything else quite as crazy as the Ideneth Deepkin in Age of Sigmar so far. If you don't know what the faction are basically these underwater elves are a failed experiment of one of the elven gods when this elven god was born he wanted to find his uh, elves his kind of kin and they were nowhere to be seen and it turned out that the chaos god slanesh had eaten all of their souls and by capturing the god and releasing the souls he was trying to bring back the elves now his early experiments failed and that is where the Ideneth Deepkin came from. They ended up kind of running away and going into a uh, self-exile I guess and hiding under the seas. They've got a pretty decent backstory and what I do love about the models is they very strongly match with the theme of what the army is all about. And yeah, I guess being away for a year, I haven't gone back and bought the start collecting set, but it's actually really good. I think I just worked out there's about um, nearly £80 worth of stuff in a £55 set. And actually, I love all the models in that set, so it's a really good place to start off. But yeah, I'm going to go through these models. I'm going to tell you what I absolutely love, what's sort of in the middle, what I really don't like and then I'm going to rank them accordingly at the end of the video. Now, I have to say off the bat with this army, there is actually very little to dislike about them. I think they're kind of going to be Marmite. Some people are going to look at them and be like, I hate this, I don't get it, I don't know what it's about. Whereas if you really are into the full craziness of Age of Sigma, you love the idea of the sea monsters, and really you just want some absolutely stunning models to put on the tabletop and go as crazy as you want with then this army is absolutely for you let's start off with looking at Volturnos high king of the deep and in fact he also doubles up as the Achelian king so I can kind of do uh, two in one here now this model looks absolutely great let's start with a twisty view of him he's very detailed I love the pose I particularly love I don't know how to say that we'll stick with his deep mare that he rides I love the way they've sculpted it with these three tails that are kind of uh supporting him. It's quite a good way of adding elegance and detail to a model without making it too fragile and you guys know I hate fragile models but I love the armor. His shield looks amazing. His cloak is cool. I particularly love his sword. It kind of looks like a pirate cutlass I guess but yeah very little about this model that you could dislike the only thing I will say and this is something that seems to affect the Ideneth Deepkin more than perhaps any other faction I've seen so far I think the choice of colors painting these models really seems to affect how much I like them so for example if we look at the uh, deep mare that he's riding I really don't like that color scheme the second you look at this color scheme here I I miles prefer it but again color is going to be a very personal choice so that's just my opinion there the other thing I'm not really sure about with him and again I think this is going to be like a Marmite thing you're going to love it or you're going to hate it I'm not really a big fan of the eye patch if you look at his optional build which is just the Achelian King I miles prefer him with just a helmet and in fact if we look at this one here there's an even cooler helmet you can give him but that to me right there that is a fantastic looking model. I love the paint scheme, I love the pose, I like his sword being up in the air. Is it the exact same sword that he's holding? No it doesn't look like exactly the same sword. This is definitely my favourite build option for this model. Now with the Achelians which are the kind of um, more 
complete elves in this army. They do really strongly remind me of the Aquaman movie and whether that is to your taste or not again is going to be a personal preference. In a minute when I show you some of the other Achillean models again it comes down to the paint scheme and I think there's another paint scheme for the armor that looks a lot cooler but overall I think it's a very cool model and yeah I really like it. So who's next? In fact here we go this is exactly what I wanted to show you next the Achillean Ishleen Ishlane guard we'll just call them the guards okay now these models I absolutely love do they show in this bit the other paint version yes okay now again when I saw this paint variety here I actually didn't like this model at all. For some reason, the way they've painted it reminded me of a prawn. <laughs> and, you know, the bluey silvery armor paint scheme, it just says Aquaman too much for me. And it doesn't look as imposing or as threatening. Whereas if you look at these guys, I love this paint scheme. I think it looks really cool. I love the fact that this unit as well has got swords instead of spears, which uh, for me personally, I always prefer. But if I was going into battle personally, I would definitely rather have a sword than a spear. But yeah, what a fantastic take on uh, a cavalry unit. Again, highly detailed. And this paint scheme here actually really allows you to appreciate how much detail there is on these models. I just find it so surprising how much of a difference the paint scheme can make to me liking these models. But these Ishleen guard they look fantastic it certainly makes a big difference to having uh, you know traditional horses and cavalry in your army it's out there it's crazy the helmet looks amazing the shield looks very cool the design of the swords is good i love the minimalistic kind of armor on the uh, eel but yeah overall a very cool unit i don't know let me know what you guys think do you prefer this armor and this paint scheme or do you prefer it looking more like this i guess it's growing on me but yeah, I really like this kind of yellowy Fangmora eel paint scheme. Yeah, so those were the Ishleen Guard or however you pronounce it, whereas the other build variety are the Morsar Guard. I'll skip ahead to these just for now, just to show you that, again, they look a lot more Aquaman-like. They really do have a kind of Spartan style, ancient Greece, Athens, you know, all that kind of feel to them. They very much look like gladiators, which I guess really does fit in with the theme they're going for, the nobility. And again, um, I can see some people really enjoying going a bit crazy with the paint schemes. I personally prefer making everything look more imposing and menacing, but that's just me. Okay, so let's take a look at the giant sea turtle i mean what can you say about this model it's absolutely bonkers it's crazy there's never been anything like this in warhammer i guess maybe the seraphon with the dinosaurs have got a kind of similar vibe but not entirely like this this is again very different i love the idea of it you know you've got these uh kind of harpoon gunners on the top with their spears you've got the guy who's uh steering the turtle i'm kind of surprised he can stay on there but hey and then what we got at the back a drummer so very much much a kind of uh, central piece for your army it's something that all your models can rally around and I guess it feels a little bit more like a support unit rather than a particularly ferocious attacking behemoth I don't know what do you guys think when you look at the uh, rotating version it's quite unusual that they've decided to split the shell into two it does very awkwardly look like a second turtle has come along and put his head somewhere that you don't really want to imagine i don't know am i gonna regret saying that there's probably some people out there who love this model so much who really are not gonna like me saying that but hey that's the thought that just popped into my head i'm not sure if this is uh perhaps the best design they could have gone with but yeah one thing i have noticed about this army is that every sea creature is being ridden by the elves and i think it would be quite cool to just have some independent sea monsters you know there must be some pretty ferocious stuff at the bottom of an age of sigmar ocean i know in the promotional material they had like krakens and stuff like that wouldn't it be really cool to just have a giant kraken model no elves riding it just some ferocious monster that's ready to uh, tear people apart it's certainly a very uh, cool centerpiece for the army though okay the 
Eidolon of Mathlan. In fact, there are again two versions of this model. There's the Aspect of the Sea and the Aspect of the Storm. I think if I open this one, all of the pictures for both models are there. Now, this is an absolutely stunning model. I remember the first time I saw it and I couldn't actually quite believe the detail in the uh, wave cloak that he's wearing. Some of it, I think, is there a better view of it here? Yes, some of this part of his cloak, I think, is a little bit too fragile. And again, I'm not sure what it was with this era of uh, Age of Sigma models, but they made the spears so thin. But yeah, it's an absolutely incredible model. But the armor is really cool. It's very distinctive. It's something I criticize the Lumineth for because they've kind of taken quite a lot of inspiration from the Ideneth Deepkin style armor. I know the factions are kind of intrinsically linked but I think they should have gone more unique. But yeah very distinctive. I'm just randomly thinking of something from a practical point of view if you had such a massive headdress on the top of your helmet and you're trying to quickly travel through the water. I'm imagining it would be quite difficult to move with this giant kind of underwater paddle on your head. But yeah I guess we'll just uh, say magic. Magic helps him move more efficiently but yeah very very cool armor design love the pose this is the aspect of the storm version and again whilst we're talking of different paint varieties I just so, so prefer the way they have painted this version. I'm not a fan, again, of just how ridiculously fragile the spear looks and this guy's headdress, whilst it looks really cool, possibly cooler than this version, it again looks too fragile. But just look at how insane the detail comes alive when you do some uh, decent edge highlighting on it and you use contrasting colours. And I'm actually a massive fan of the uh, helmet design that they've given the aspect of the storm. But yeah, it's a super cool model, a great centerpiece, highly detailed. I guess I have a slight issue with the lore because they look very solid and very real and physical and tangible, whereas in fact they are kind of meant to represent a spirit and not only a spirit, but basically they're representing a god that is dead. So I guess that aspect of the lore falls a little bit flat for me, but as a model, I think they look absolutely stunning. So on from the Eidolon, we've got the Achelian Allopex. There's not too much to say about this because, again, it's very similar to the Fangmora Eels and the Leviadon style unit. And, you know, it's kind of cool that you've got a weapon team on there and, uh, again, one of the Harpoon launchers. I really do love the design of the shark, though, especially this kind of uh, carving that they've cut into the side of it. Although now I'm wondering if uh, that's meant to be where his gills are. Does he have gills? I'm not really sure. Maybe this shark doesn't work like a normal shark. But yeah, the shark's a very decent model, nothing to really complain about. And then really we get down to the last few models in the set. So we've got the Namati Thralls and the Reavers. I'm going to be really unique, as I usually am, and say that these are my absolute absolute favorite models in the entire army. I absolutely love them. I love the stockiness of them. I love the lore behind them. I love the way they're designed. They are so unique and different and fantastic. There has been so many jokes about the fact these have no eyes, especially for the archers. But come on, we're in a fantasy realm, which is all based around magic. In that sense, they don't need eyes. But yeah, I really can't wait to actually get some of these models and start painting them. They've got amazing amazing poses. I know you get 10 of them in a set, so they're on the pricier side, but then they are quite big models. Not that I want to go on a rant about gender diversity, but I really did like the fact that they started just mixing in male and females in the units. Loads of different weapon options. I absolutely love the paint scheme. And funnily enough, on these models, I absolutely love the uh, kind of blued silver armor that I criticized on the Achilleans. Really, although it's going to be a unique opinion here, I actually way prefer the Thralls and the just the Namati in general to the Achilleon. I mean, look at this guy. His pose is absolutely amazing. And again, every single one of these that I've clicked through, they've all had a totally unique weapon option. But yeah, definitely my favorite unit in the army. 
Now the Reavers are very much in line with the Thralls. They're a very similar unit, very closely uh, associated with them in terms of their design. Again, absolutely superb posing. You guys know I love archers. I just wish that their rules were as good as their models looked because I think that was a massive disappointment. Every piece of writing they ever said, in fact, look, here we go, uncannily accurate despite their blindness because they kind of use magic Magical ripples and almost echolocation to aim and yet despite that they really are not a very good archer unit in the game. It's a massive shame because the thralls are a really fantastic unit to use in the game and I just wouldn't really use these with how their rules are at the moment. All right, so last few models, we have got the uh, kind of sorcerer models. My favorite one of the lot is definitely Lotan. Again, very cool that he is a named character. Does it really get much more unique than an underwater elf who has a giant octopus that has a club and a sword? And in fact, he's even holding, I think, the ink pot that he's using to write with. It's absolutely bonkers. It's amazing. I love it. It's a super cool model. And I don't think I've ever appreciated how cool the uh, scroll looks with the octopus kind of holding it at the right angle for him. But yeah, pretty great model. I never noticed he's got like a massive bag of scrolls behind him as well. That's the thing with the models that they're bringing out at the moment. They're so detailed that the more you look at them, the more details you pull out. But yep. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite models in the army the soul render i don't quite like it as much but it is still an absolutely epic model i love the little lure light that he's dangling from his head kind of like the evil fish from finding nemo but yeah i also love the fact he's got his loop on his um kind of fish hook as if he's trying to uh, ensnare and capture people. Very cool. Love the fish. He's a very solid and uh, detailed model. And I like his posing. And this is going to be a bit of a common theme with some of these models that are uh, individual units. I wish they had more customization. I mean, look how cool the Tidecaster looks. It's a fantastic model. But with all of the Isharan, it's just going to look a little bit samey if you've got more than one of them. They kind of end up looking like they should be unique characters and instead it's a generic unit that is uh, basically stuck in a single pose. I don't think there are any customization options at all for this model. Yeah, it's a single sprue. What you see is what you get. One way to build her and that's it. Now in this case, I don't mind so much because I love the model. I think it looks really cool and I personally probably wouldn't buy more than one of her anyway. But for some people, that's definitely going to be a little bit disappointing and I think that brings us on to our last model which is the soul squire so we've got the soul render that kind of brings people back alive we've got the warden of soul ledgers it's all about inspiring the thralls and the namati to fight better the tidecaster is your standard sorceress slash magician that's all about bringing the sea to the land and then finally we have the soul scribes who are the navigators now again there's nothing really to be particularly excited about with this individual model it looks very good it's not particularly exciting it's not particularly bad it just is what it is i guess i do love the design of his cape and I also really like the design of his head sculpt. It would be quite good to just swap him onto the uh, Volturnos model so that you can just have him without an eye patch. That would look really good. I kind of get what they were going for with the uh, fish. I'm not sure how effectively that works. And in fact, particularly coming off the bottom of this uh, little whatever that is, a basin kind of thing that he's not even holding. I'm not exactly sure how that's attached to him. But kind of having this pipe at the bottom with just some random fish sticking out of it. I'm not really sure about that. If you hold him at the right angle, it looks really cool. But at certain other angles, it looks a bit funky. And I imagine again that it's going to be a little bit fragile. So let's finish off with a ranking of these models. Let's start with Volturnos. Now, just because of the eye patch, and I know that, like I said, it's a Marmite thing. You'll love it. You'll hate it. I'm going to put in between kind of okay and not a model that I really like and I know I'm being really harsh just based on the eye patch and in this case I'm being influenced by a paint scheme that I don't like when that would actually be a very easy fix. 
But yeah, just giving him a simple head swap, changing up his pose a bit, giving him a decent paint job, he goes straight into the green. Right, so next up, the Soul Scryer. Nothing particularly to dislike. Not my favourite unit in the army, but, you know, not particularly bad, so I'll put him sort of comfortably in the middle. Tidecaster, absolutely love this model, so straight over in the green. Of the two versions of the um, Achillean Guard, I would put these ones in the OK range and the other build variety I'd put straight in the green. The Namati, you guys know, I love them. They're going to go straight in the green, both varieties of them. I just really wish they'd rewrite the rules for the Reavers. The Shark unit, I was thinking that he was possibly my favourite of the, uh, you know, the Alopec and the Fangmora units, but actually I think I would put this one in the yellow and I think I would very definitely prefer these Fangmora eels. The Leviathan, I think I would comfortably put in the middle and I really hope that I haven't offended anyone too much with my description of what that now reminds me of and probably something that I'm never going to forget. The Soul Warden, I would definitely put him over in the green. The Soul Render, definitely in the green. And the Eidolon, that's an insane model. I've never seen anything quite like it, so it has to go into the green. So I get that this is my list. You guys are probably going to be the total other way round. But there is enough here to absolutely love to make this a kind of classic faction. Now, do I have any particular criticisms? I think we could have some more individual sea monsters that aren't being ridden. I also feel like the model range is also a little bit small because, I mean, these are variations of the same kit. These are variations of the same kit. So really, there's not a whole lot of choice in the army, and I definitely think it'd be nice to have some uh, more options in the future. Whilst um, the Fangmora riders are kind of a bit of a hybrid of cavalry and elite infantry, I think they could have done an Achillean kind of foot soldier unit that could have been like, a more between the battle line and the cavalry unit I think that could have been quite cool but overall yeah they're a fantastic army they're very unique and maybe not to everyone's tastes but for the people who like this faction you're gonna absolutely love them right that's it for my video for today I think I'm quite tempted to talk about the Sylvaneth next let me know down in the comments which faction you would like me to talk about next and I will try and get round to those as soon as possible but thank you very much for all your support on these videos don't forget to hit the thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys really soon.